I've learned to thank that voice for all the years that it criticized me. I think other people can start to practice this as well and sort of shying away from that voice inside our head. What they can do is start to say, well, let me build a better relationship with myself and with that voice and look for the treasure and the strength that that voice can be cultivated towards. How did you make that transition or how did you start on that path for yourself? I had a serious eye injury many years ago. I hit a hammer onto a chisel and a splinter of metal flew right through my eyeball. I was rushed to hospital. I had eye surgery that day. As you can imagine, it's quite shocking and it was quite painful. They said, listen, there's a tiny piece of metal that has gone right through your eyeball and is stuck in the retina. And it needs to come out today. Otherwise, the metal will rust and you'll lose your eye. And I thought, well, I don't want that to happen. I had surgery. They put me to sleep and they had to remove my eyeball from the socket while I was asleep. And then they could take the metal out, put the eyeball back in, stitch me up. The surgery was quite successful and it's incredible what can be done. Now the surgeons and the physicians said to me, look in a, about a month, your eye will return to normal. You might have a bit of a scar, some focus issues, but you'll be fine. Well, that one month turned into about three years of pain and frustration. And I was diagnosed with an immune system disorder called Bechet's disorder, which is where the body has an overactive Im immune system. It made my eye very inflamed. It looked like it was bloodshot all the time. And so I had to take medication for that cortisone and immune suppressant. And that didn't really work and had to try and wean myself off that and heal the eye. And so after frustration, as you can imagine, of three years of not being able to heal my eye and having lots of pain, you know, running out of money, not being able to work, my girlfriend at the time left me. So it was a lot of heartache, which led to the deepest depression I've ever been in. Plus I was going through imposter syndrome because I wanted to start my entertainment and speaking workshops in schools. But as a result of being frustrated and medical specialists telling me that I might have to be on this medication long-term, I took my healing into my own hands, or at least I started to think, well, what can I do to heal myself? I found that meditation and quiet, calm, inner contemplation was absolutely key. And I know everybody can do this if they're going through pain, if they're going through frustration, depression, or imposter syndrome, that calming your mind is a great first step. When you can calm the noise in here, you can reduce the stress. It's going to have incredible benefits for you by listening to that inner voice. I was able to build a better relationship with myself. I was able to slow down and live more in the moment and trust myself. I think that's a big key message that I learned from this injury. I ended up thanking life for this injury because it taught me such a powerful lesson. Sometimes the pain in our life is a great teacher in disguise. I was able to go through that and come out quite healed and inspired to continue teaching.